Hello, this is Pastor Mark Hendricks of Jasper Pentecostal Church. I welcome you to our video service for Sunday, January 10th. My sermon for this morning is Follow Me from John chapter 1. Follow Me. And our songs for this morning are My Light House from Wren Collective and Here I Am to Worship by Tim Hughes. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel of John, 
in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 1, and beginning to read at verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. Father God, we thank you for this account of Scripture. We thank you for this account about your Son and our Savior, Christ Jesus. We thank you for the words that he spoke to the first disciples, calling them to follow him. And we thank you that our Savior still speaks those words to us and calls those who would be his disciples to follow me. And Fa Father God, I pray that you will speak to us about the call to follow your son, Jesus. And so I pray in his name. Amen. One of the recent exciting archaeological discoveries in the land of Israel is the ruins of the Galilean fishing village of Bethsaida. Two sites, one named Etel and the other El Araj, have long been candidates, and both have fit the basic biblical description for the ancient village. But recent excavations at El Araj and discoveries like a first century Roman coin and the remains of a Byzantine era Church of the Apostles have made the site increasingly more likely to be the biblical Bethsaida. And El Raj is only 200 meters from the Galilean lakeshore, which also makes it the more likely site for a town called Bethsaida, or translated House of Fishing. The other site, at Tel, is more than two kilometers from the shore. So, archaeologists have most likely found the village that this text, here in the Gospel of John, says was the hometown of the apostles Peter, Andrew, and Philip. In these verses, we read about the call from Jesus to the disciples Philip and Nathanael to follow me. And the account illustrates how the Master still calls you and me, and everyone who is ready to come and follow him. The day after the new disciple Andrew has introduced his brother Simon Peter to Jesus, the master meets their friend Philip and welcomes him to become a disciple also. In verse 43, Jesus decides to leave the Jordan River where John has been baptizing and return to the region of Galilee. And on his way, the master meets or finds Philip, the text says. The use of the word finding or finds implies that Jesus and Philip do not meet by coincidence, but by heavenly appointment or will. And the master readily tells the man whom he has chosen to be his disciple, follow me. Follow me not simply along the road to Galilee where Jesus is now walking, but follow him as a disciple. Learn from the master the righteous way he teaches and lives and understand who Jesus truly is. 
Verse 44 notes that Philip is from Bethsaida, which is a town on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. And the disciples Andrew and Peter are from the same fishing village. This likely explains in natural and human terms how Jesus finds Philip. On the way to Galilee, the disciples Andrew and Peter meet their well-known friend from Bethsaida and introduce him to the teacher. And the compelling manner of Jesus and the enthusiastic testimony of Andrew and Peter serve to convince their friend from Bethsaida that the teacher must be the Messiah, that Philip and the rest of Israel have longed, hoped, and waited for. Out of his own excitement and conviction about the arrival of the Savior, Philip goes, in verse 45, to find another friend named Nathanael, and happily tells him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. In the scriptural law in Deuteronomy 18, the Lord God has promised the Israelites that he will raise up for them a prophet like Moses. And many Jews still watch for this spiritual figure and suppose that he will be the Messiah the scriptural prophets have also foretold will come. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, is the long-awaited Messiah and prophet, Philip excitedly declares. But his friend is not so ready to believe the Savior is some little-known man from such an unpromising place. Nazareth, Nathaniel asks disparagingly in verse 46, can anything good come from there? Nazareth sits pleasantly in the hills west of the Sea of Galilee, and the town overlooks the broad plain of Esdralon that reaches from Mount Carmel along the Mediterranean coast to the Jordan River on the east. But the scriptures foretell that the Messiah must come from Bethlehem in Judah and the town where the righteous King David has been from. So Nazareth in Galilee hardly seems a likely place for the great prophet and deliverer of Israel to come from. But in answer to his doubtful and wary friend, Philip simply urges, come and see. In other words, do not judge the teacher Jesus by what you suppose about him, or even by what I have said about him. But come and see for yourself what he is like. Next, in verse 47, Jesus sees Nathanael coming toward him and says, even before he has met the man, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Or, here is a man who speaks honestly and acts sincerely. This foreknowledge about Nathaniel from a teacher whom he has never met before catches the young Israelite by surprise. And in reply, he asks quite immodestly and unpretentiously in verse 48, how do you know me? Or in other words, how do you know me so well and that I am a truthful sort of person? And to this sincere question, Jesus responds in the same verse with an even more profound and surprising revelation about Nathanael. I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Jesus can hardly know by human reasoning alone that only hours earlier Nathanael has been under a fig tree. And from the reaction of the truthful young man to this declaration about his recent whereabouts, it must have been just as the master now says. 
Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. The young man says readily and unreservedly in verse 49. And coming from a sincerely speaking Israelite, these are extraordinary acclamations and the highest and most reverent terms a Jewish man can use. And to this wholehearted profession of faith, Jesus responds in verse 50, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. The ministry of Jesus is only just beginning, and so also is the revelation of his heavenly glory. I tell you the truth, Jesus solemnly promises in verse 51, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Nathaniel and the other disciples will see a revelation of the heavenly Son of Man and prophesied Savior that will be like the glorious dream the patriarch Jacob has seen at Bethel in Genesis 28. A glorious revelation of the heavenly Son of Man. That is what the gospel about the Son of God and Savior Christ Jesus is. The unveiling of a marvelous mystery for those who will believe and follow him. The Spirit of Christ Jesus, the Spirit the Lord has sent on his behalf, the Spirit who testifies now about the Savior, the Holy Spirit speaks to hearts and minds, inspires faith in the gospel message, and calls to you and me and everyone who is ready, follow me. Follow the Master Jesus. Follow the Rabbi from Nazareth and the heaven-sent Son of Joseph. Follow him in faith and consecration. Follow him by learning his way from the scriptures. Follow him with godly living. Follow me, Jesus says to you and me, like he called the disciple Philip. The master found him, found the friend of Andrew and Peter, who was also from the town of Bethsaida, the Lord found another one of the twelve disciples who would become his apostles. And the Spirit of the Lord similarly finds you and me. He finds those who are willing to believe and ready to follow. The Spirit knows our ways and our coming and going like he knew the path of Philip on the day Jesus found him and told him, follow me. And what did Philip do after he began to follow Jesus? The new disciple went and found his friend Nathanael. And this is what friends do for one another, is it not? When they have good news, they share it with their friends. When they have met someone extraordinary and inspiring, they want to introduce him to their friends. When we have found the one whom Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, we cannot keep him to ourselves. We must tell our friends. We tell our friends about the day the Master Jesus found us. We tell our friends why we believe the man from Nazareth is the Son of God and Savior of the world. We invite them to come to church or an Alpha course to meet Jesus for themselves. And nowadays, we share ministry videos with our friends through 
social media. Like and share. That's what friends do. <laughs> but some of our friends have doubts. Like Nathaniel. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Indeed, the greatest of all goods has come from Nazareth. And he has been born in Bethlehem, just as the prophets have foretold about the Jewish Messiah. If our friends have honest questions and sincere doubts, then we have reasonable answers and compelling proofs for them. We have the amazing prophecies of the Old Testament that have been wonderfully fulfilled through the coming of Christ. He is the great prophet whom Moses foretold would come and speak the true word of God. Jesus is the descendant and son of David whom the prophets foresaw would inherit an everlasting kingdom. The son of Joseph has fulfilled these prophecies and more. So, if our friends honestly want to know about the one we call Savior, and if they have sincere questions about who he is, then we can readily show them from the scriptures. We can happily share with them the many compelling reasons for believing in Jesus. Come and see, said Philip to Nathaniel, and we similarly invite our friends. Come and see for yourselves. Come and see what I myself have seen. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming to see him, Jesus said to the honest doubter, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. And here is the sort of person who is ready to become a follower of Christ. Someone who loves the truth. Someone who lives by the truth. Someone like the true Israelite Nathaniel. When a truth-minded soul meets the way, the truth, and the life, Christ Jesus, there is ready recognition. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. And the Lord answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Similarly, the Lord Jesus has seen you and me. And every truth-loving soul, wherever we have been, waiting for the truth to call us. The Spirit of Christ is calling us and testifying to us about Jesus. Our believing friends like Philip are looking for us and wanting to share their faith with us. And we ourselves are ready to meet the Master and say about him sincerely, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. We are ready to follow Jesus. And that is only the beginning of our revelation about the heavenly Son of Man. The more we put our trust in Him, and the longer we follow and learn from Him, the more our understanding about the Savior grows, and the greater our trust in the Lord Almighty becomes. You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, Jesus said to Nathanael. You shall see greater things than that. And the early disciples surely did see greater things from the Master. And his faith in the Son of God and King of Israel grew much stronger. I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. A revelation of heavenly glory. A glimpse of the immortal Son of God who has become a man. 
the resurrection and the life, Christ Jesus. This is whom we may see and know when we decide to follow him. The Alpha Canada website currently features the video testimony of a young man named Nick, who has recently become a follower of Christ Jesus. Nick's story and spiritual journey is not unlike many young Canadians. He grew up in the church, but in his late teens rejected his faith and turned away from Jesus. But early in 2020, Nick went to a wedding and met an old friend who invited him to an Alpha course. Nick reluctantly started attending. But then COVID hit, <laughs> and the church moved the course online. So Nick continued with the course and discovered that being in the comfort of his own home made it easier for him to open and share with his online friends. When they reached the talks on the Holy Spirit, Nick was overwhelmed by the love of God and surrendered his life to Jesus. He experienced the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in his life and went from being a guest at Alpha Online to helping host a small group for the next course. Follow me, Jesus said to Nick, through the Holy Spirit through the online Alpha course, and through the invitation from an old friend. And follow Christ is what Nick has done. So, what about you? How will you answer the call Jesus now speaks? Follow me. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that you have uh, sent your Son, Jesus, into this world. We thank you that he has come and brought salvation for all of us who are willing to believe in him. And Father, I thank you that he has called disciples to follow him. I thank you that he still now by his Holy Spirit, calls would-be disciples to follow Jesus. And Father, I pray that uh, this day we will answer the Lord and say, yes, I will follow you. I will make you my Lord and my Savior. I will walk in your footsteps, Jesus. I will learn your ways and I will do your will and I will, by the grace of God, become more and more like you, Master Jesus. I pray that each one who is watching will say yes to the call to follow Jesus. And Father, I pray also for healing. I thank you for uh, the good news about the Alpine Summit seniors residents, that they have uh, received the vaccine that uh, uh, will result in their wellness and uh, uh, their uh, safety from uh, uh, the uh, virus. And I pray that uh, you will keep the rest of us uh, safe and well. And uh, may we all be careful and be uh, mindful of our family and friends and neighbors uh, so that we might uh, protect them from the virus also. And I pray that we will uh, all soon receive the vaccine so that uh, we uh, may be safe and well from the virus also. 
Father, I pray, uh, I thank you for the healing that you have uh, granted us, and I thank you for this vaccine that you have graciously provided for us, and I pray that uh, we will all soon be safe and well uh, because we have received the vaccine and because uh, you have given this uh, gracious gift to us. And so I pray for our healing, and uh, I ask your blessing in the name of uh, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lovely, 
altogether worthy, altogether